everyone, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping and in this video I'm going to teach you how to understand your chart of accounts so that you can code and or categorize correctly in your QuickBooks Online. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about coding a little more. I've done um, a video about um, importing this set of chart of accounts, but Coding and categorizing are the same word. I use them interchangeably. So just keep that in mind, please, um, as we go about this video. Okay, so in a couple different videos so far for your therapy practice, we have added bank transactions where your bank account is connected. And I showed you about adding rules and picking categories for items. But now I want to talk, I'm going to make a copy of this, but I just want to talk about the categories some more so that you kind of understand this in a more detailed way, right? So I want to talk about this one, owner's draw. So you would use owner's draw if you are an LLC, okay? So that is, you don't take a salary and that's when you would have that. Now, if you are corporation, such as an escort, then you would take a distribution. Okay. So then it would be called owner's distribution. It's still an equity account. Okay. So it's just, those are two different terms used in accounting and they just have to do with it, your entity type. So that one's pretty simple and you can, um, it's either money you give or take, but usually the draw is when you're withdrawing money is taken out by the business owner. Same thing would be for distribution. And contribution is when you give the business money. So if you take money from your personal account and you give it to the business account. So now always remember, when you have a business, you wanna keep a separate business check, even if you're a sole proprietor. Okay. And then in some of my videos, I've talked about breaking out the income. So, that I think is really important that you break out your income because it's so simple to do it in the beginning and so much harder to go backward. So let me just show you in the chart of accounts here or actually in the profit and loss regarding the income. Okay, so right here, I created copay and self-pay income. So that would just be, you know, if someone's paying you 20, 30, $50 in a copay, or if they're just paying in full, right? So they're paying for an hour of therapy that, you know, that would be one part. Then this, I broke out insurance by the insurance company, right? And it can go on and on. You could have 30 different companies that you might accept insurance from. And why it's so easy to code these out is if they are electronically paying you, they would come in like in the bank detail showing this, right? And in my, check the other videos out in our playlist for um, setting up your own mental health practice. I show how to create rules and sub insurance code, income codes under the type parent of insurance income, then all of the different companies. But then, like I've said in prior, um, another video, this is really nice. So if you're comparing that to what your biller is saying you're making, you will have in cash, we call cash basis, what you're really collecting because sometimes things get out of whack with, a with your biller. So this is can tell you what you actually got in and they can tell you what they think you're making with that insurance company. Okay. So we're just gonna review the chart of accounts so you can understand your coding more as you go through those bank fees. I feel like this is one of the hardest things for um, a new bookkeeper or accounting student to grasp. And it's really simple, um, but sometimes people complicate it. Okay. Then we have credit card discount. That is terminology in the credit card fee world. It's just the amount that they either if they give you $1,000 and they take 50, 50 is what you call your credit card discount, or maybe you make 1,000 
but they only give you 950 and they keep that at 50, that's that discount fee. Can we have outside billing service? This would be your outside biller if you're using one. And if you have any subcontractors, right? Any um, person working under you that is not working as an actual W-2 wage employee, they're very different. And then maybe transcription services. Okay, now we're getting down into advertising and promotion. Let me see if I can just make this bigger. If you can see it better, there we go. Okay, so now we're down into overhead, right? And so everything that I'm showing you here, down this income, cost of goods and expenses, that's all what shows up on your profit and loss. Let's just look at it again. I didn't post a million expenses, but here is your income. Just have little dis, uh, credit card discount and just a couple expenses, right? So it'll get a lot bigger as you post your full um, QuickBooks account. Or the act, actually what I mean is when you post all the activity on your bank account each month. So then you could have automobile expenses and this would not include your car payment, just so we're clear. A car payment on a loan, like a loan payment would be a payment against a liability. So that's not included here. If you had a lease, you could have that under auto. Bank service charges, that's like the monthly service charge that the bank charges you to have your checking account. Business licenses and permits, that would be really probably through the state or um, your local government. Charitables, when you're donating money to um, genuine charity, don't, don't do GoFundMe and things like that. That's not a, I think they call it a 503C. Continuing education, um, depreciation expense, you shouldn't be posting that would be a journal that your accountant will give you. Dues, memberships, and subscriptions. So I put all of those together. So it could be any of those three things all in one. It's just simpler to have them as one category. Okay, so then you have insurance, and these are subcodes, right? So for instance, if you are coding something out, I'll just show you on the fly what I'm talking about. Like Milmic is a malpractice company. Don't use this business network. Okay, and then I post it as an expense, like it auto came out of the account. The payment account is checking. I just want you to see this on the profit and loss. What happened? So see, it's a sub account of this greater code of insurance, then if you paid other insurance li liability, that also would show up here. And this is how you're finding out how much money you're actually making, right? By making sure all your expenses and your deposits are entered each month from your business checking, and then they are going into these categories. This, cat this chart of accounts that I created here is the culmination of multiple practices that I have um, and that I believe are really mostly the codes that you would need. Another thing to note though, is if there's one weird little one-off type subcategory, a lot of times you should create um, another one called other under the parent of insurance. So in office expenses, we put, we put, I put everything under that so that you could collapse it to different things. So we have cleaning, computer IT software, equipment rental. So that could be like your postage machine rental or a copier rental, or even if you have a lease on a computer, it's those sort of things that are completely expensable. Again, don't put your loan payments here. I will make a different entry if you have loan payments. You write that down. Okay, and then you would have your repairs and maintenance. That would be, you know, anything you had to do if you had to pay someone to paint. Um, you have a repair person come, an electrician, things like that. It would go here under repairs and maintenance. What's nice is then this can be, I'll show you in a minute, like collapsed. 
So we have telephone, internet, cable, and website web hosting. So let's go look at our office expense right now. So you can see that we have three different entries so far for office expenses. But if we don't want to look at every line item of this, you can collapse it and it just shows the one number. Okay, so I put office supplies as a sub, right? And the other type of thing that you could have, sometimes you have an office expense of like, you buy a little printer or a new scanner. And it, as long as it's under a certain amount, we could actually put that in here too. So let me show you how you would create an extra code. You would go transactions, chart of accounts. And this is anything that doesn't really fall under office supplies. It could be scanner, whatever you want to call it. It's an expense. I always pick everything. I try and keep everything office general. And I make this a sub account of office expense. So then let me just show you what that looks like again. If we were, I don't have anything that bank details. So I'm going to manually post an expense. Let's say we went to Staples. I think I called it printers and computer equipment. So anything like a printer or a scanner, like something small, it's under a thousand dollars. It's not like an actual fixed asset that you have to depreciate. And the key is like, why are you doing this, right? You're doing this because you need to know how much money you are making. So see, that was so simple. I added another code and put in one thing I kind of thought about. You could move it up here though into computer and IT and software and it'd be fine there as well. It, don't get too detailed because then you just, your chart of accounts is way too big. Payroll expenses. This is where you would post things if you're using a payroll company. Only use this for that. Um, it is not for the subcontractors. So th these checks normally would have change in them, like 82 cents, right? Because um, these payroll checks have um, taxes withheld and it's never a perfect number. So if you think you're paying, you're posting things for payroll and everything's like $450, you're miscoding it, okay? Because never is anyone's paycheck without change that I've seen. Printing and reproduction. That would be if you, um, you know, you had stationery done or you went to Staples and had 100 copies made of something, or you went and printed out postcards at Vistaprint, that kind of thing. Okay, professional fees. It's usually like accounting and bookkeeping and legal, architects, you know, think professions, reference materials, I think that's obvious, rent expense, supervision, this is a big code in mental health practices and then travel. Okay, you could, again, make subcodes of travel, airline travel, hotel, right? But uh, most of my um, therapists don't really, that isn't like a standard of your practice. So you normally don't have a lot, um, unless you're going to maybe a conference or something of that sort, sort of thing. Um, we have utilities, Interest income is other income. So that's if you gain any you know, interest off of money at your business bank accounts. And then this is ask my account and you code that to things you're not sure of if you have to maybe go back and look into, right? It says here transactions to be discussed with an accountant, consultant or tax preparer. Now, if you notice, I don't have meals, I don't think in here. Um, the reason I don't do meals for um, my therapy practices is a meal is, a, they used to call it meals and entertainment. And that was, um, you know, when you were taking out a client 
and only 50% is deductible. And that meals and entertainment is no longer deductible. That was like when you got seats at the Yankee game and you take a client, but now there is only meals, but um, I think it would be unethical to be going out to dinner probably with um, a patient. So I just leave meals out of there. Um, you may have a, like a staff meal if you have a large practice and you are buying lunch for all of your employees. Then that could be something where you might need to add the meal. But I leave it out of my chart of accounts because I'm working mostly with um, small practices. And like I said, we're not taking um, patients out to dinner. So I would just leave that one out of there. And if you want to have it, you can put it in yourself. All right. Um, I hope this helped you understand the categorizing of your um, QuickBooks. All right. Have a great day.